You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thanks for joining us this morning. We are grateful to have you with us and honored to be spending a little bit of time with you. So thanks. Honestly, today's question comes from a surveyor, and that makes me oh so happy. You know why? Because this surveyor has an open mind, and he's asking questions because he says his intuition says this doesn't make sense, which his intuition is absolutely 100 effing percent correct. It also illustrates how so many people that are not even surveyors but involved in the surveying industry think that their skills in surveying uh, correlate to success in photogrammetry. And that could not be a larger fallacy. Uh, it's an it's an enormous fallacy. And this is such a great, op- I am so grateful for this question because it's such a great opportunity to showcase how what you don't know that you don't know can ruin your career. Uh, that is if you were to ever be taken to court over a survey that you had done and the uh, plaintiff had hired a really good SME, you would be so royally screwed, it would not even be funny. Um, And I think that this is such a fantastic opportunity to help this surveyor, because it kind of sounds like his underlings are trying to push him to do this stuff. And he's like, no, no, this doesn't, this science doesn't seem right. Uh, He's correct, he's absolutely correct. Um, And I'm grateful for this because again, You know, in our mapping class, there are thousands of little nuances that we go over, but we try to systematize it to create these habits and routines to make the workflow a lot easier to go through at the highest level of precision possible. And this particular question illustrates that point to a T. And so today's question is going to be brought to you by our in-person mapping boot camps. Don't forget to join us for Flight Mastery as well, where you can earn educational discounts on your insurance, but you will never forget what you learn at Flight Mastery, as it will teach you how to fundamentally, well, get rid of what we call systemic errors, risks, and potential for crashes. As you learn what a lot of other drone pilots uh, don't know, which is rules of takeoff, landing, um, accident, in emergency avoidance, close proximity flight, natural banking turns, and so much more. Like how every exercise is dedicated to helping you better understand depth perception as a whole. Literally, you'll run a box drill with us and realize how it's fundamentally different than every other trainer out there. And you'll realize something very important about trainers. But I'll let you make that decision. When it comes to mapping, though, there is not a more comprehensive course that goes over not only the processing of imagery in multiple uh, software suites, but also goes over the acquisition of mapping data. Because as I have said thousands of times in my classes online and my classes in person, shit data in equals shit data out. And you can only map what you can see. Learn what I mean and so much more and join us for an experience I promise you will never forget and will help you immensely when it comes to creating 2D and 3D deliverables. Go to thedroneu.com and scroll down to that little wheel and it says events and you can sign up for a mapping and flight mastery class that I promise will make you a Top Gun pilot. Hello, Rob. Hello, Paul. My name is Duane. I work at a land surveying and engineering firm creating 3D models uh, ortho photos and site monitoring pictures with uh, Phantom 4 Pro uh, Pix 4D. I'd like for you to talk a bit about ground targets. I've got some pilots that uh, they like using parking stripes, paint X's, and curb inlets and corners of concrete for ground control points. Um, are these valid points? We do have two foot by two foot targets made out of 12 inch by 12 inch. Uh, peel and stick tile that you can get from Menards. They can be a little glossy and uh, on a sunny day they do tend to get overexposed. Do you just set your exposure to auto or do you uh, do something else? Uh, But are the paint stripes and paint X's okay to use for ground control points or does it PIX4D need something better to stitch everything together and and create a better thing? Is PIX4D actually using the target image for placement um or can it just be a 18 inch x that you paint on the ground 
give me some insight into this. Um, I'm really thinking we should have something better, but you let me know. <laughs> Dwayne, thank you so much for the question. You don't even understand how excited Paul is to answer this question. No idea. <laughs> I don't see what the big deal is. Use a stripe. Use a splot of paint. <laughs> what a, just pick something. This is not a Pick fish. a blade of grass. Come on, Paul. What's this, the big freaking this is, deal? This is literally like the disclaimer after every time Jim Cramer is on CNBC. Uh, the uh, opinions of Jim Cramer do not represent uh, what is on CNBC. In fact, nor they don't do, matter at all. No, nor do we agree. And yes, he is a boomer who goes off on tantrums like a baby, and we all know it. But guess what? That gives us ratings. So just like that, uh, what Rob just said is not actually <laughs> reminiscent of the opinion here of the Drone The difference here. is that... <laughs> But, uh, I'm joking. <laughs> Kramer, not so much. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll put in the link to this show our five set landing pad uh, or our set of five landing pads. That's what you need. Honestly, Anyways. I want to send him a set just for I'm the question. I'm telling you, literally, Dwayne, I want to give you a discount. So email me. Okay, Dwayne, you're the man. I hope I hope you play this in front of all your plebes. You're the man, okay? <laughs> uh, honestly, anyone trying to pressure you into this uh, benign tactic of ground control point marking clearly has no effing clue what they're talking about. Okay, now I say that because you're in engineering and surveying. If you were in something that didn't require a high level of precision with georeferencing, it would be a completely different story. And the thing is, is that most of the online education regarding 2D and 3D mapping is at that lower level basic, oh, these things don't matter. But in your field, they do. They do matter. And so a couple of things here. Number one, when it comes to ground control points, there's a few things that are rules for ground control points. Number one, GCP should be 40 times ground sampling distance. So if your GSD is an inch, that means 40 inches by 40 inches, okay? That's number one. Number two, ground control points are supposed to be matte finish and a highly discernible, uh, Discern highly discernible. Discernible? Is that what you mean? Yes. Highly discernible center point at pixel level. Do you know why pixel level? Because Pix4D and all the other photogrammetric softwares have a trigonomic factor for how much you zoom in and mark the GCP. If you're not literally as zoomed in as possible, it reduces the accuracy of said point. Now, here's the thing. Even in my class, I teach about how to use uh, naturally occurring uh, or natural markers, okay? But we talk about some of the rules for those natural markers. Okay, number one, matte finish. Number two, highly discernible center point at pixel level. Uh, we also talk about, you know, how to utilize those particular natural markers, like they can't be in shaded areas. Now, here's the thing. If you have one of these natural markers and it is less than 40 by 40, the chances are your projection error is going to be outside of the scientific limits to have good precision on your overall or what we call absolute accuracy. What do I mean? Let's say you do a little stripe line and you mark the center of it. Number one, how do you know it's the center if the stripes are the same color? Number two, how do you actually discern what is the true center of that point when you do not have highly contrasting colors that are not overexposed? This is why drone use landing pads and our GCPs are, that's right, Blue and orange, not black and white. Black and white gets overexposed. It's also highly reflective. That said, it's not good for GCP marking. Now, typically, one of the things that we talk about when it comes to mapping class is how your projection error, which is essentially a calculation of the uh, human's ability to mark GCPs, must be below 0.6 in order to actually be acceptable for an quote-unquote accurate reading. Now, if you were to have natural markers, a lot like the ones that you explained in your question, chances are your projection error is far outside of the limits that would say that you have a high absolute accuracy in your 2D maps or 3D models. Okay, so that's number one. Um, 
Naturally occurring markers are okay to use, but typically are used in quarries and places where we're doing lots of volumetric calculations over time. Okay, you do really want really good ground control points. You do want large ground control points with highly contrasting images that are a matte finish that have a highly discernible center point at pixel level. This is literally all the reasons why we developed what we developed. Now that said, I'm really grateful for your question because sometimes, no, not sometimes, oftentimes when it comes to discussing photogrammetry with surveyors, all the time they're like, but Rob, my RTK GPS unit is good to a millimeter. So I'm going to get a millimeter of accuracy. I now spit my coffee out and laugh at those people, by the way, because that means that they don't understand photogrammetry. Like it's literally like breaking one of the fundamental rules of photogrammetry, which is your absolute accuracy can only be a multiple of ground sampling distance. Why? Because your photos cannot actually see or discern a millimeter on the ground unless you're shooting a 250 megapixel image from 100 feet up, okay? It's just not gonna happen. That said, um, it's also why, and I, I, I've said this so many times, I will never forget the guy who got laughed off of the stage at PIX40's conference talking about a one millimeter accuracy. And he, he literally did not understand the rules of ground sampling distance. Hmm. Like it, it was very entertaining for me. I enjoyed it, but that was kind of the sick sadistic side of Paul. So um, that said, <laughs> which does exist, uh, that said. Uh, <laughs> less and less every day. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Uh, but that said, you do need ground control points that are large. You do need them that they are not black and white, that are a matte finish. They can't reflect light. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to mark them. And also, why can you not have these super small tiles that, you know, do this? It's because when you mark those and you don't mark them properly, zoomed in all the way, trying to discern the true center point, not picking images that are highly oblique to mark said point, all of those things factor into your projection error, which factors into your overall RMS error. Okay. So again, go into all the times that your plebes have been using these, um, lackluster GCP, uh, targets, go into the quality reports Go look at the projection error. I promise you are going to see exactly what I'm telling you right now because math doesn't lie. And Paul has learned that the hard way too. Okay, so that said, yes, when it comes to GCPs, you do need large ones. You do need to essentially put your GCPs out so they're not in a straight line at varying elevations and think of them like uh, legs to a table. Okay, that's essentially how you should deploy them out in your field. Um, so... Can you use natural markers? Yes, but they, you really want them to be very large. You want them to be highly contrasting and discernible at pixel level. Okay, this also doesn't mean that we're using cloud-based softwares that only let you zoom in halfway to an image to pick a GCP. That is not scientifically accurate enough for absolute accuracy. And it's really, really um, depressing when we see these companies that are like, you can do drone mapping, you use our software, it's in the cloud. Oh yeah, how do you mark GCPs? Well, you just look at the image and click, click the uh, center point from the image. Okay, why is that retarded? Okay, I'm sorry for everyone that I just offended using the word retarded, but I don't care because to retard Man, an engine roll today. literally means to slow it down. So anyway, it's just a definition. That said, Rob, if I were to measure this wall, okay, and we were building in here, would you be looking at the end of the tape measure from like five to six inches, maybe a foot away? Or would you be 30 feet away looking at the end of the tape? I'd be right up close to it. Exactly. And that's the exact same reason why we zoom in all the way to mark GCPs and why they need to be a certain size. Because in, in order to accurately measure those points, we have to look at it at pixel level. Okay, I'm done. Dwayne, you're the man. Yes, you need, you need GCPs, especially if you're doing work that requires high accuracy, which you're in engineering and surveying. So the answer is yes, you do need it. Okay. That said, uh, naturally occurring markers like parking lines can cause uh, a large ellipsoid error. Uh, if you're not familiar with ellipsoid error, uh, you can come to one of our classes. I'll be happy to literally walk it, uh, walk you through it because there are so many details. I've watched other people's mapping classes and I'm like, you could literally go to jail for teaching people this. Like, this is so wrong. It's not even funny. And it's also why I've taken mapping training so seriously. And that's again, thanks to our good friend on good seeing. So miss you, buddy. Wish I'm you were good. in Denver. Yeah. I miss going up to see you. Where is he now? He's in freaking uh, Seattle. In Vegas? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, it is a beautiful city. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, what about, because there are other points where you train to use like the corner of, not GCPs. Naturally occurring markers. Right. And so just to clarify that distinction, I think would be important when you can use those types of points relative to GCPs. First of all, it should not be your primary means. Uh, absolutely not. Second of all, if your deliverable is in engineering or surveying, you should they should never be used. Oh, okay. Um, you know, if this is something that you're doing for construction, volumetric measurements, it's okay. Got because it. you have an acceptable margin of error. But even in that scenario, you're still using a set of G, of actual GCPs as you just described. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyway, Rob, I'm ready to develop our new uh, uh, ground control points. So. Oh. By the way, I do find it funny that uh, someone in the drone industry who makes accessories tried copying our GCP landing pads, but don't know the rules of mapping. And it shows by just looking at the thing. I'm just like, oh, gosh, guys, I appreciate the imitation. But, man, you're screwing over a lot of people. So anyway, we here are about truth and we here are about doing it right because you never know when it's going to go wrong. And that is a truth of life. So on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Dwayne, you're the man. Thank you for sending in this question. You're absolutely right. Your intuition is right. I think uh, a nice little um, intellectual slap to the face to your plebs is necessary and uh, enjoy it a little bit, but not too much. <laughs> Thank you for the question. <laughs> Ask DroneU.com for your question, and uh, hopefully you can ask a question that gets Paul as excited as that one. <laughs> Did you see like my even like my BPM of how fast I speak? Just woof. Yeah, so, no, but, it's uh, it's fun. It's fun. It is fun. Thank you again for joining us, Dwayne. Once again, you're the man. And if you guys have questions, go to AskDroneU.com. But thank you again for joining us. As always, my name is Paul. I'm Rob, and I am not bald. <laughs> True that. <laughs>